What's the most amount of time you spent on a screenplay? The most amount of time, um, boy, those are years ago. <laughs> Not a lot of time now, but um, I think it would be my fifth spec and only because I stopped on page 60. And that was because of a personal uh, tragedy. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to go back to it because I felt guilty about not uh, going through my grief. Some, someone had passed away. Um, and it took me probably six or eight months of stopped on page 60 to go back and finish that first draft. So I had good momentum and then it was just, you know, I was knocked out um, and just couldn't focus. But that experience uh, worked its way into the script because there was loss in the screenplay as well. Um, so it was really, um, you know, really found its way in there in, in the success of, you know, drafts after that. Not in the first, obviously, because it was only 60 pages, but it was, you know, upon this, the other drafts, it really, you know, so that I think that would have taken the longest time, but I don't. You know, from writing assignments because there there's a schedule, I really like to get a script done. You know, uh, in, in in obviously the time that the contract states, but just as in my own spec too, I, I don't want to work on it for years. You know, I want to have something available and, and do successive drafts, and then have something to be like, okay, this is the one that at least that I can show people. So I would say. Um, you know, three pages a day is a feature in a, in a month. Easy. It's very doable. Um, and people say, oh, I worked on a script for a year. I don't, and again, you can work on it for a long time without doing pages. You know what I mean? Because you're doing the research. You're doing, you know, all these other things to get to that point. That could take time as well. You could spend months. Uh, that particular script, I did spend months of research before I even started, you know, because it was a dream. So I had this little, like we were talking about, all I had was a, was a little, like a little scene. And I was like, well, that's interesting. But what, like E.T., what about if someone was left behind? And so started building out characters and story and, you know, it was a historical movie, so there had to be some research done. So, you know, it's not always like, oh, write the script in a month. It could take, like the iceberg, there's a lot of work that has to, under the surface that has to be done. So um, I don't know if I've answered your question. <laughs> when you finish the one uh, screenplay where you stopped at the 60 pages yeah. and something bad happened, yeah. and then there was this guilt, how did you feel once you finished that screenplay? Because you said you took some of that emotion and put it in Well, I, um, I felt it was almost, um, it, that it was almost a, uh, a mission you know, to finish it because uh, the person would have wanted me to do that. And so that helped me get through the guilt of like, well, how could it be writing this script, you know, when this happened and um, someone had passed away. Uh, and uh, so I thought, you know, this person would want me to go back and do that. They wouldn't want me to, I don't say waste my time, but you know what I mean, on this this thing and so that helped motivate me to go you're okay there's no guilt in finishing this thing you know so yeah because hmm. you never know um you know when you're writing your life can get in the way and does and you know it's this other thing that you do and if it's your vocation you know that you get paid to do it um you know you can't just toss it aside and say oh well i mean you know stuff Stuff happens in life too. Sure. Um, but like we were talking about earlier, but using your personal experiences, you don't want to have to go through that stuff. But if you do, you know, you tap into it. You know, use it. It's re it's real. It's authentic. You know, it's authenticity. Um, actors love that kind of stuff. You know, and so writers should do so as well. The script that you're referring to wasn't that the first screenplay that you sold? It was, yeah. It was uh, 
World War II picture called I'll Remember April. And uh, it had bumped, bumped around town for a number of years and uh, it finally got optioned and then it made. So it was like seven years from the time that I wrote the first draft to uh, first, first day of photography. And not, like I say, not every project is that way and some never get made and you never, like, I said, like we were talking about earlier, you never know the journey of a project. It could sit around for years on a shelf and then someone discovers it or it could sell tomorrow for big money. You know, there's everything in between. So, um, yeah. What did that experience teach you? Because didn't you have a day job or you had another job during that time when you had to? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, during, during those seven years, sure. And I also wrote other specs and, um, uh, you know, the whole, the whole gamut. Uh, what it taught me was that, you know, if, if you really believe in a script, you know, don't, don't give up with it. Now, you have to see the writing on the wall, but this one had almost won the Nickel Fellowship. And I say almost that year they picked the top eight people you know, out of 3,500, you know, to get the fellowship. And my script was in the top 20. So they actually called me and told me that. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. And so from that, I was, you know, I was able to get some people to read it and this and that. But the, the personal connection I had at the time with this company that was just starting was the way in. It wasn't from an agent. It was, it was my own networking. So that's also important that everyone says, oh, I'm looking for an agent, you know, and your own networking, I, th I think, is almost more important because it's the face-to-face, -face. I've got you. And, you know, an agent, unless they're just starting, doesn't need a 25th client. In, in the way now some agencies are actually signing with the Writers Guild about, you know, about uh, everybody had to fire their agent you know, who is in, 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 the, in the guild. Um, and some agencies are signing now to say, okay, we're gonna follow the, you know, the rules. Um, but you should be networking. You know, that's the most important thing is to have, because that wasn't sold by an agent. It was my own connection into that company. So that's, that's what I learned as well. Where were you networking? Like what, like you don't have to name the place, but was it, was it kind of an event? It, it was my friend's friend, who was in the business. So my friend had said, oh, my friend is an assistant to blah, blah, blah. And they were just starting a brand new company. They already had a company. Cut to a million years later, that assistant became president of that other company. And then he went off and left to have his own company. So you see how, you know what I mean? It moves on. So every assistant is not gonna be an assistant forever. You know, they want to look at the Rolodex and, and find that amazing script to bring to their, their producer and say, look what I found. And you want that script to be yours. And you want that assistant to be somebody that you have a contact with. Because they're going to grow and move into producers and whatnot, you know. And that assistant, because of that script, then as president of the company, hired me again and again. And then when he went off to his own, hired me again. You know, so I mean, it, that's how you build that. None of that was from an agent or a manager. Now, they're great to have, but, mm -hmm. but I, I see people, I wrote my script, I got, I got to get, you know. It's like, you should be out networking. You can't, you can't rely upon your career and give it to somebody else. You're the one thinking about it 24 hours a day, you know. Like networking where? Um, you know, around town, like in, in uh, there's, there's functions all the time. Um, ISA, International Screenwriting Association has them, Final Draft has them, Stage 32 has them, meetups, get-togethers, things like that. Uh, so just, or, or just be out, you know, like we're saying in Los Angeles, you never know who you're gonna run into. And then there's no, there's no studio gate there that says they're not getting in. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, my friend uh, was chatting up someone and they were the assistant to one of the biggest producers in town. Wow. Now nothing happened, but then we, we were talking, blah, 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 and okay. But they could have said, oh, that's an interesting story. Because they're looking for that interesting story, right? And they want to be the one who brings it to the mucky muck and says, look what I found. Now they have to read it first, it has to go through hoops, but you know, over, I mean, it has to go through um, hurdles, but 
isn't that much better than, you know, oh, I'm a struggling writer and I, you know, here's my stuff and the agent or agency gets back to you six months later, you know, I mean, it, it, those, those can get you to different levels, absolutely necessary, but my point is, don't think that's the end all be all. Those will come when you're ready. That's the thing, they'll come when you're ready. They won't come when you just finish your first screenplay and let's just, the most amazing thing, you know, and then there already has bids on it and, and stuff like that, you know. So don't stress about getting representation right away. That only comes, plus you have to be a workhorse. If an agent's gonna take you on or a manager, they wanna see that you're working. Like, okay, you got this, this is good. We need to work and change. What do you, you, you got another? Then what else are you working on? You have to be working, not just the one script. Throw it in the ring and go, am I done? No, you're not done, it's just the beginning. Do you think desperation um, scares a lot of would-be deals away? Yeah, you, you, um, they can sense a desperate writer a, a million miles away when you're like, uh, you know, the best place to be is where you don't need it, where your life doesn't uh, rest upon this 100 pages. You know, uh, that's, you know, that's where it's, and plus the desperation can work into your writing too. You know, so no, it's, and it's hard, you know. Desperation and fear and those all things you gotta, you know, you gotta constantly keep in check.